Well here I am with the piston and the connecting rod from the engine that had the um, piston circlip drama that we've looked at and I've got the replacement parts I need now for the big end and I thought I'd have a good look at the con rod and this is what I've found so far. I'm going to check it make sure it's straight and true and if it's not um, well then I won't use it we'll put something else in but uh, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt until I've made a few checks. But I notice there's obviously been quite a bit of thrust or force trying to send this conrod over. Well, it's so close to one flywheel, it's obviously actually rubbed the flywheel there. But also, the small end eye has also got evidence of quite a lot of wear and rubbing against the gudgeon pin boss of a piston but not this piston this is um, a recent piston that the owner fitted first off when he had the engine reboard and I've obviously uh, worked on the engine uh, soon after that as we know um, we've had some fun and games with this engine between us me and the owner but there's no evidence of the small end of the conrod rubbing on the um, gudgeon pin bosses of this piston so that's obviously happened with a piston that he's had in prior to this one but I'm going to check and make sure that the big end and the small end are parallel and true to each other <laughs> we're getting some rain what a surprise it's uh, summer in Wales of course anyway we'll check all this lot out and uh, depending on what I find that will dictate on whether it may get used again or whether we need to replace it well, I've got the uh, conrod from the uh, Royal Enfield 500 bullet engine I've been working on that's had the circlip issue among other things. We've got the conrod set up with the, um, the gudgeon pin from the small end held in the chuck of the lathe and on the cross slide we've got the tip of a tool set up there so that when the small end of the conrod is placed over the gudgeon pin there's just the lightest of contact being made there at the big end against the uh, cutting tip there. Okay, the small end of the conrod's pushed firmly against the chuck of the lathe. Let's uh, turn it round and have a look what we've got when it's fitted the other way about. Right, it's clearing the tip. Of the cutting tool by I would say uh, about a millimetre which at first impression might lead to the thinking oh the conrod might be bent but if I look at the shank of the conrod against the bed of the cross slide I'll try and get some light on it here um, see if that helps you can see the cross slide and the shank of the conrod are parallel all the way along the length of the conrod. I'll turn the conrod over and we'll look at that again from the other side to confirm it. But um, I don't think the conrod is bent. And we'll come to why there's a slight out of step in a moment. But there we are, the conrod's turned over. Just get some light on again. And have a look at that um, cross slide again. And I would say that that conrod is straight um, as far as its fit on the gudgeon pin at the small end goes uh, and through the length of the shank of the conrod to the big end. I'd say that's all straight. The slight outer step that we're getting I think is down to um, the sort of inconsistencies in machining at the small end of the conrod uh, which really is... Uh, rather rough on some of these Indian conrods especially but um, it's it's not vital like at the big end that the um, either side of the small end is uh, equally disposed from the centre of the conrod really and there's a running clearance or should be a running clearance between either face and um, the gudgeon pin bosses in the piston so um, I'm happy that the conrod isn't bent and at the small end 
is running true relative to the shank. But um, like I say, I think the small sort of discrepancies on either side of the small end are what are giving us that tiny sort of clearance when the uh, conrod's turned one way as to when it's turned the other and not really of too great a concern. If I'd seen any sort of run out between the shank of the conrod and the, uh, the bed of the cross slide in the lathe I would have said that conrod is bent but uh, looking at that I'd say it isn't and uh, it's probably as good as it ever was when it was uh, made at the factory uh, you make your own minds up about how good that might be but um, I think what I'll do is I'll fit the crank pin and the floating bush to the flywheel next it'll be the timing side flywheel and then I'll offer up the conrod to it and turn it over and see if there's any difference uh, in the clearance between the shank of the conrod and the face of the flywheel um, when I turn it one way or the other and if uh, that's pretty consistent then fine if it isn't then I think I'm going to be looking for another conrod for this uh, rebuild so that's where we're at at the moment well I've run into a problem already and I won't be fitting the conrod just yet I've just unpacked the new crank pin and got it out of its packaging and um, I'd rather use the old one actually to be honest there's marking there's a nick in it there there's pitting it looks like it's a, I don't know um, being in water or I, I really don't know or it's 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 been ground there's an imperfection there's been an imperfection there before it was ground and when they ground it it didn't take the entire imperfection out perhaps also I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not but you can actually see very faintly or I can sort of almost like very very light grooves across the bearing face of the crank pin uh, where it's been machined in the first place like I say I don't know whether the camera is going to pick that up or not but there's a nick or two in it there's that pitting and there's another nick there you've got a mark and some pitting there heavier pitting there I'm not going to use that I'm going to have to get another one I'm not happy with that that's uh, a step backwards from uh, the other one to be honest I don't know uh, how that got through quality control wherever it was made but it's not going in an engine that I'm going to build so um, back to the drawing board <laughs> 